Loss comes in many forms, and usually in unexpected ways. It can be devastating, leaving you facing an uphill struggle to go on with life without someone you thought would always be there. But life does go on, and even in the deepest despair, we can find hope. Welcome to Grief Relief with your hosts, Drs. Gloria and Heidi Horsley, brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation, helping people find hope after loss. Welcome to our show today. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley with my co-host and daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi and I talk a lot about sibling loss, and we run into a lot of people that have had sibling loss, and sometimes it gets a bit minimized, so we wanted to do a show on sibling loss today. The first guest is going to be Dana Brophy. Dana's brother, Sean, died when he was 21 years old in a car accident, and he was missing for nine days before he was found, and it was her only brother. And Xander Sprague lost his sister, Lucy, at 30 years old. She was murdered while she was a, a student at John Marshall Law School in Chicago. And they're going to talk about how significant these relationships were and how it has totally changed their lives. And they're great examples of transformation after loss. And then we're going to end with a song called Always by Billy Bensing and his girlfriend, Kelly Garmeyer. And this song is dedicated to those who have loved and lost. And you can find him at BillyBensing.com. Wonderful music. Yes. Well, let's talk to our first guest today. Hi, hey, Dana. Dana. Hi. It's great to have you on the show today, Dana. Thank you for having me. You and your mom and your stepdad are such great examples. Do uh, you want to mention who her mom and yes. your stepdad are? Alan and Denise Peterson, we've had both of them on the show. We've had Alan many times, times because he's a singer-songwriter. And they go all over the country with Angels of the USA giving concerts to people that have had loss. And right now, I think they're back east somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, Dana is their daughter. Absolutely. <laughs> and a great support to them. Well, Dana, talk a little bit about your brother, Sean. Yeah. Sean was a very fun, hilarious guy. I mean, all the memories I have growing up, um, just being with him all the time, you know, he's all fun memories so um, you know losing that I think is you know my best friend in so many ways mm -hmm. so you you lose all the the past history and then all the stuff that's gonna come ahead so that's that's such a good point because it's it's a loss of they you, Sean knew things about you nobody else knew right and Scott knew things about me no one else knew so you do lose the history a piece of your history, and then, like you said, Danny, we lose the future we thought we were going to yeah. have. Mm -hmm. And with you two together, as a mom, because I know there are a lot of parents out there worrying about this, are you going to be okay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and how long has it been? It will be 10 years next year, so... Mm -hmm. um, it, and you, you it, were 17 when he died, right? Yeah, I was, I was 17. And it took me a long time. I did some support group stuff with my mom actually mm -hmm. right after it happened but it wasn't helpful for me then and I actually went to therapy a couple years ago and it was finally you know I was ready to go and move through it but, but it I took... want you to do it now <laughs> as soon as they die we don't want to see right. our kids unhappy we right. want you to go see a therapist mm -hmm. and we want you to cry and we want you to figure it all out and we're mm -hmm. so worried about you. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that's, that's, and Dana can speak to this too, but that's one of the things I see when I work with families. The parents have their own agenda mm -hmm. about how we as siblings should grieve. And we need to do it in our own way, on our own mm -hmm. time frame. And sometimes, and I don't know about you, Dana, but for me, I hid my grief from my parents mm -hmm. because I didn't want to cause them any more pain. Yeah. Because they'd been through so much. I don't know yeah. if that was similar to you at all. Yeah, and I think I... I just didn't want to talk about it with my mom mm -hmm. for some reason and you know it was me and my mom and my brother for most of our our lives my mom was a single parent raising us so I I just isolated and I didn't want to talk about it with her mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about it sometimes with my friends but on my own terms and sh everything was about Sean you know after he died with my mom so I kind of hid my feelings about that because I, I just didn't want to talk about it. I love what you just said, friends, Heidi. Yeah, because one of the things we find is, as parents, we think our kids aren't talking to anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're talking to friends. And like mm -hmm. you said, on their own time, if they're right. in their own terms. And I like what you, when you said everything was about Sean. Mm -hmm. Because when somebody dies, they take on such a big life form. And, and you know, it's like I said, you know, when, after Scott died, he never did anything wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> 
you're elevated to the status of God, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it takes on a lot of energy in the family, and, yeah. and everything often is about the kids that died. Yeah, yeah. And what about a, uh, myself as a parent? I don't want you to drive. My gosh, your right. brother got killed in an automobile <laughs> accident. Oh, my gosh, mm -hmm. you're going to drive. Where are you going to be at night? Right. You know, what's going to happen? And now with the cell phone, uh, are you going to check in with me mm -hmm. every Five minutes, yeah. you know, what's going to happen? Ring once right when you get in the house. <laughs> Was that a problem Text. with you? I mean, here you and Sean and your mom were such a tight threesome. And all of a sudden now it's just you and your mom in the house. Mm -hmm. Was she worried that something might happen to you? Yeah, she was. And she, I think we both handled it pretty good. I think she tried to not be overbearing, but she still checked in a lot. And I always called when I got in the house because, you know, during those years after, after he died, I got into partying and I, I was mm -hmm. out a lot so I think it kind of made it worse too because she was worried even more but I always made sure to check in and, and and so Dana I know we're about to to close in a minute this segment and bring on Xander but what are some of the things that helped you to heal after Sean died I think probably just being around people who didn't treat me differently I think that was the biggest thing because I know mm -hmm. When people knew of the story, I felt like everybody looked at me differently. So it was nice to have my friends treat me the same. I think mm -hmm. that was a big help. And, you know, watching old home videos and things like that always helped because I didn't want to lose the memories. And that was the, that was the hardest thing was I don't want to forget, you know. Mm -hmm. So those things always helped. And then the therapy, you know, eight years later, I, I went to therapy and worked through some things too. It just helped to talk about it in a different stage that I was in. Wow, so everything yeah. in its time. 